Pat Ryan from UCOR Rare Metals. I don't really know where to start between your news flow and actually your news coverage. So why don't we, for fun, start with your news coverage? You were in a very well-read story by Reuters recently. Can you talk to us about that? Yeah, certainly. Um, you know, Reuters uh, contacted us probably a couple of months ago, Tracy, and uh, they were doing a um, a piece on Western mid-market separation that was needed and and who had technology out there that really had a uh, an opportunity to get to the finish line. And um, they'd heard a lot about our rapid SX tech technology, our column-based tech, um, they really liked what they heard, and uh, they actually came to Alexandria, Louisiana. I think if you noted the article, it, it had a, a headline that said Alexandria, Louisiana. That's actually uh, where the, the writing stemmed from. And um, the whole purpose of the article was to say, okay, we need this Western world uh, mid-market separation. Who are the innovators out there that are really trying to move forward and get the job done? And um, UCOR was certainly one that they centered on. And we got a lot of you know highlight time in the article. There were a couple other uh, technologies mentioned that were, you know, nanotech um, used to program proteins. Um, there was a, a comment about retech in Scandinavia and, and um, you know, what they're doing over in Scandinavia. Uh, one or two others that they touched on, but really I, I kind of applauded Reuters for understanding that that mid-market is certainly the key and that's, that's what's needed to uh, continue to build a supply chain in North America, which really parallels what the DOE is looking at as well. Uh, the DOE realizes that this mid-market is, is crucial. So um, yeah, good on them. They came to Louisiana, they had a look, uh, they understood they were up to, they made a couple of interesting points about, uh, you know, let the miners be the miners and let the technically difficult separators be the technically difficult separators. And um, they they applauded UCOR for its work in that area. As you know, we have a resource in Southeast Alaska, the, the Bulkan uh, resource, but uh, we've kind of put that on the back burner and you know, moving along at a slow pace because we realized that quick to revenue and first mover in this this market of separation is key. And um, Reuters likes the um, likes that business model going forward. So you know, good on them for um, centering on UCOR in that article. And of course, there's more than Reuters centering on UCOR. We have breaking news this morning with the Louisiana governor, obviously, is applauding what you're up to and that they've they are executing UCOR's SMC industrial tax exemption contract. Let's talk about that, please. Yeah, the, the news came out this morning. Uh, you know, we have uh, through Louisiana Economic Development, uh, uh, part of the state of Louisiana, there's a $15 million incentive package, and the governor had to sign off on the tax incentive portion of it, which he did just recently. It was in the last 10 days or so. Uh, and also in the re release, too, we've noted a couple of contractors now that we brought on board that are Louisiana-centric, but they're they're kind of uh, global and North American in nature. One is um, orbital engineering. Orbital engineering are the Pittsburgh. They build big energy plants, infrastructure uh, projects, uh, real, really good engineering team, but they have an office in New Orleans. So they've now joined the UCOR team to be able to take our commercial demo that we're um, um, you know, working with in Kingston and actually deploy it. Uh, in Louisiana. They've joined the MetChem team. The MetChem team are working on the process flow sheets. Orbital will work on the production engineering. We've also added Radcliffe uh, Construction. Radcliffe Construction is in central Louisiana. Uh, they do a lot of work on the Gulf Coast. Um, they have uh, great um, you know, electrical contractors, piping contractors, and given the nature of what we're building in Louisiana, those uh, those disciplines of piping and pumps and, and uh, PLCs, electrical systems, um, Radcliffe are, are top notch. And, and all of those groups, along with uh, the England Authority, the England Authority is um, a, a political arm under the Louisiana government uh, that's, that's actually um, controlling the building that UCOR is moving into in Louis Alexander, Louisiana. Along with um, Louisiana Central, they came to Kingston just last week. So the contracting companies, the engineering companies, um, the government people, they all arrived in Kingston because they wanted to see the commercial demo plant firsthand. Uh, very impressed with what they saw. And really what we're trying to show them is this is what we're copying and pasting. Copy and paste this. This is what we're putting in Louisiana. So a, a very Louisiana theme for a couple, couple of reasons. But one in particular is that the, um, we're looking for further support from the U.S. government, looking for further support from the state of Louisiana. And uh, we've got contractors and engineering firms and, and local authorities pretty excited about what's going on. Well, I would like to personally 
congratulate both HUCOR and Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards on executing this contract for the benefit of job creation and development for Louisiana. I'm a huge Louisiana fan. It's my understanding this is expected to create at least 100 family wage-paying jobs. Can you talk to us a little bit more about how this is anticipated to have a very positive impact on the local and state economy? Yeah, absolutely. You know, Alexandria, uh, which is in the center of the state, when we did our due diligence and ended up in Louisiana, we we, we did it for a couple of reasons. But well, one in particular was the uh, <clears throat> the economic profile in that area. There are good uh, technical universities. Uh, there, there's a good workforce. But that workforce has typically been used to the oil and gas, where they have to sporadically go offshore to work, you know, in the in the Gulf. And it's not reliable work. And, and what Alexander would like to do and what Louisiana would like to do specifically is become more involved with the uh, energy transition that we're involved with here in the 21st century. Uh, they've got a couple of uh, battery opportunities that have um, taken hold in Louisiana. So they see this, this rare growth processing opportunity as another uh, part of that plan going forward of creating stable jobs that uh, allow people to, you know, good, good paying family jobs. And uh, yeah, 100 plus uh, uh, people employed, that's sort of 5,000 ton per annum uh, a plant. And um, again, Louisiana doing all the right stuff to make sure they're part of this energy transition. So, yeah, good, good, good on them and good on the governor. I also really am enjoying following you, Cora, because I want to point out one more thing that I would love for you to comment. And that's the duality of both the U.S. and Canadian government being supporters of you, Cora. You're kind of like the perfect example of, you know, how North American leadership, can you give us an update on how you have support from both the U.S. and Canadian government? Yeah, yeah, certainly the, um, you know, the DOD stepped up uh, a few months ago with a program to allow us to commercially run thousands of hours on our plant in Kingston. You know, think about it, that's the U.S. government saying, here's, here's a uh, funding package to run thousands of hours on your plant in Kingston, Ontario, because we'd like to see that technology then deployed in Louisiana. And so uh, the DOD under the IBAS, which is the Industrial uh, Base uh, Analysis and Sustainability Division, you know, they were uh, they were instrumental in making that happen. On the Canadian government side, they too looked at what the U.S. was doing. They saw the Heavy Earth program and said, "We too want to be part of this. We, you're a Canadian company." Um, so the, uh, the the people with the Canadian government stepped up to a 4.3 million dollar program, which was to run commercial hours using light feedstock and uh, again thousands of hours to continue to gather metric data so we can plug into louisiana the canadian wish list is that uh, smc strategic metals complex number two would be back in canada for now they realize number one is in louisiana they want to help make sure the commercial fortitude of what we're doing is in place so yeah canada u.s working together and 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 not not easy um not easy contracts. No, they don't just write checks and say, here you go, good luck. Uh, a lot of due diligence that went in both on the U.S. side and the Canadian side to say, you know what, this technology you have, this is what we need to westernize, to innovate, make sure we're able to go ahead and uh, deploy effectively in, in North America. So two governments understanding the importance, understanding the tech that we have and getting behind it. Commercial run many hours, longer term, let's get behind it even further. As you're heading into the holidays, Pat, you've been working around the clock. So we really appreciate you even fitting us into your schedule here with this exceptional update. What should we as shareholders anticipate in the upcoming quarter, please? Well, you know, you'll, you'll see more um, um, data and commercial metrics coming out of the plant in, uh, in Kingston. Um, you know, part of that plant, as you know, is to run qualified product, qualified product to purities that can be used in a supply chain that includes metal alloy making and, and eventually two people like automotive companies, wind energy companies. And we're in discussions with several companies on an offtake side. So product to spec, um, hopefully the, uh, the, the finalization of our first offtake arrangement. And we're looking at uh, several right now. We're in discussions with automotive. We're in discussions with consumer electronics, wind energy and, um, and national defense companies. So everyone looking at what we're doing, we're trying to make that happen. Uh, effectively for our shareholders. Um, and then uh, Louisiana, they continue to build out. Now that we've got a very strong team with Orbital, MechChem, uh, Ratcliffe, look for further uh, development plans of, of that plant in Louisiana taking form, taking shape as we 
run to be a first mover in this uh, this market that needs first moving companies that that can you know get jobs done. So yeah, all of that is part of our uh, Q1 uh, news flow uh, in 2024. And for those of you that might be new to UCOR, I encourage you to go to the UCOR website to take a read through the bios on this management and board of directors. And on that note, Pat, thank you so much for your time. I wish you a wonderful holiday. Uh, you as well. Thanks, Tracy.